So far with the Twilio API, we've worked purely with the REST API, accessing resources such as numbers and firing off requests to send text messages. In order to programmatically manage incoming and outgoing calls, and to inform Twilio as to what it should do during those calls, we need to provide some XML data known as TWIML. TWIML provides us with a number of verbs to use to manage the flow of a call. Among other things, these verbs include say, which is text that Twilio should read to the user, dial, to call another user and add them to the current call, gather, to capture key presses from the user, hang up, to end the call, play, to play an audio file, and record, to record audio from the call. The Twilio SDK can be used to generate Twimmel, which we pass to Twilio when making a call or handling an incoming call. The Twilio PHP SDK contains a Twimmel class, which we can use to generate Twimmel. Each of the verbs that Twilio supports are functions within this class, which we call to generate some Twimmel. Let's start with something simple. We will say a sentence to the user on the end of the call and play them some music. Twilio even provide a selection of Creative Commons licensed hold music on their Twimlets website, which we can use for this. First, we call the same method and pass the sentence we want to have read out as a parameter. Subsequently, we call the play method and pass the URL of an MP3 file as the parameter. If we look at the output for this code, we can see the XML that has been generated. Some of these Twilio verbs support XML attributes. These are additional properties which define additional functionality for the Twimmel. We can define these properties in our PHP code as an associative array as a second parameter. For example, with the play verb, we can tell it how many times we want to loop that particular file, whether it's zero, which means it will continue to loop, one, which means it will play once, being the default value, or any other number. Now we need to expose this Twimmel via a public web address so that Twilio can see the XML that is generated. Using the Vagrant environment that we have our code running in, we can run Vagrant Share to expose our local server on a temporary URL. There are other tools available, such as PageKite and Local Tunnel, which is sponsored by Twilio. In order to make a call, we create a new call resource with the API, providing three parameters. The number to call from, the number to call, and a URL to the Twimmel to process the call. The caller number must either be a number we've purchased in our Twilio account, ported to Twilio, or verified for caller ID purposes. As soon as this code is run, a call will be initiated, and we will have access to an ID for the call. This ID lets us make changes to a call that is ongoing. The call object that is returned gives us much more than just the SID of the call. We also have access to other properties, such as when the call was started and created, when it ended, who the call was between, and if it was a human or a machine that answered the call, such as a voicemail, and much more. The full details of the properties available are on the API documentation page for the call API. and pusher video series from Pact. We can work with the call object that's returned from initiating the call to modify a live call. The update method lets us set properties on the call, such as changing the status to completed and therefore hanging up the call. We can also update the twimmel being processed by the call in real time. To generate the twimmel to hang up the call, we just call the hang up method. The main difference between an incoming and outgoing call is that we initiate the outgoing calls, whereas incoming calls get their Twimmel URL from either the URL setting assigned to the number in Twilio or the URL set in the application associated to the number in our Twilio account. Let's update the voice URL for our number to the Twimmel we've created earlier.
Once we run this code, it will programmatically update the voice URL for this number. We can test this out by looking at our Twilio account and reloading the number page. Here we can see that the URL has been updated. In this video, we've used Twilio to make calls and updated our numbers to change how we deal with incoming calls. We've used the Twimmel service to generate our Twimmel XML to control these calls and update a live in progress call. Next, we will look at using Twilio to create conference rooms for conference calls.